So I, I'm really pleased to introduce our colleague in Aeronautics and Astronautics, Shashui Mo. Shashui got promoted this year as an uh, associate professor in Aeronautics and Astronautics. He's done a nice job on his slide here, so I don't have to read my notes. He got his PhD at Yale in 2014, spent a year in Cambridge, the Purdue of the East, right, MIT, <laughs> and then joined us. I had to sneak that in somewhere, right? And then uh, joined us in 2015 as an assistant professor in Aero and Astro. Um, Shashai works in control and coordination of multi-agent autonomous systems. He develops distributed algorithms for solving large-scale linear equations by multi-agent systems. He works on resilience for consensus-based distributed algorithms, does some inverse optimal control to learn multi-phase objective functions, and is also working on formation control and reinforcement learning for UAVs and other drones. A couple of exciting things that Shashwai has been involved with. He's been on uh, awards that had three Purdue Seeds for Success, so those are very large awards. He's been part of three of those. Our students elected him as the outstanding faculty mentor. Our graduate students did that in 2019. Uh, he teaches a lot of our undergraduate courses in, in the control area, but also introduced a multi-agent systems and control class in Aero and Astro at the 500 level. He's had over 21 directed study projects with undergraduates and graduate students. He's the advisor, or has been the advisor, for the Purdue Autonomous Robotics Club. He's the faculty advisor for the First Street Tower Resident Hall. He has really worked on a relationship with Northrop Grumman, has several contracts from Northrop Grumman, is one of the first awards with Rolls-Royce and their cybersecurity initiative with Purdue. So that's another tie-in. I've got a lot of stuff here. I'm not going to read it all, Shashwai, because you've got to go to class at 12. But he's also uh, the co-director for the Center of Innovation for Control, Optimization, and Networks. Everybody knows that as ICON. That's a center he's done uh, in collaboration with controls folks all across campus, strong here in engineering. That's brought in speakers both virtually and physically from all across the country and some around the world. He's also the associate director for the Center for Intelligent Infrastructure. He's on the faculty steering committee for the Autonomous and Connected Systems Initiative. He's a member of IEEE. He's been on organizing committees for different conferences. He's an associate editor for systems and control letters, and I don't know when he sleeps. <laughs> he's done a lot in the sh short number of years he's been here. But Shashua is an outstanding colleague. He's done a lot for engineering and for the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics. So with that, let me introduce my colleague. Shashwai Mo, Associate Professor of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Thank you, thank you. Oh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for the introduction, Harvey and uh, Bill. And it's really an uh, uh, honor to be promoted to Associate Professor. And time flies. Actually, I still feel I'm in 2021. That's why my, uh, the tenure promotion actually happened in 2021, <laughs> if not 2020. And uh, my research has been uh, focusing on control for autonomous systems. And you may ask, that's more like my career and also uh, future career. You may ask why we care about autonomous systems. So actually, autonomous system already existing, you know, in our day life or in future uh, missions, uh, self-driving cars, this very fancy humanoid robot, or the unmanned ground vehicles, Curiosity for exploration of Mars and also for you know, the cooperative robots and for in health, healthcare, manufacturing, or monitoring a large area. Actually, our morning society has been relying on more and more of these autonomous systems. So uh, the next question we ask, well, you know, what are the fundamental challenges for current and the future autonomous system? Those actually the challenges are the four types of main challenges that we have identified for current and future autonomous system, which also serve the motivation of my research. So because it's autonomous system, so first we want the system to be autonomous, means to achieve some missions without human guidance. So that's uh, uh, a lot of methods developed there, optimal control, inform learning. But the open challenge there is, you know, for different missions, and no matter your method is based on optimal control or reform learning, they all require mission-dependent objective functions. But how to get these object functions is it's, it's very challenging. It depends on different missions. So we have done some work on that. And also adaptive, you know, our work for autonomous mainly, we developed a fundamentally new inverse object control method to learn object functions. And the state of art is based on KTT conditions for under which the result cannot sense and adapt. So our result mainly could Solve the IOC based on incomplete data, could a robot could sense and adapt. And also adaptive, that's actually, uh, when we talk about adaptive, we usually people will say, oh, machine learning. We have a lot of data and train the data you know, for, to deal with uncertainty dynamics. 
for our group more like going to the other direction. What if we don't have data? We don't have the, 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 uh, a lot of data for training. For example, in Mars exploration, we don't have a lot of data for that. But can, in control field, the key concept will be call, it's called feedback. So how, that's more like means how to utilize the online data to serve as a, a, a baseline data to train your algorithm or to tune your algorithm. So we have borrowed the concept of end-to-end -end learning from machine learning community and developed a framework for adaptive autonomy. And later on, we, for, we realized that, okay, that actually is also a, a, a method that could solve three large classes of problems, not just adaptive autonomy, but also system ID and also inverse optimization. And also cooperative. That more like uh, we want the autonomous system to cooperate with the human. So that uh, uh, but, uh, a direction actually is, is also a direction new to me. Uh, when I first uh, studied uh, uh, the human robot teaming, I actually didn't have any funding that. But the uh, good part is that so our uh, associate head, Wen Chen, gave me a lot of TAs. And uh, uh, I, I used that to explore the directions of the new. You are in our department, and the TAs are uh, uh, assistant professor, junior faculties, have the priority to get in the TAs. That's actually very helpful for a junior faculty, you know. That time I didn't have a lot of funding. And that enabled me to explore the new topics. And also, the, uh, for the human robot teaming, we actually also developed a fundamental framework for based on control, optimal control, and the adaptive system to allow a robot to interactively integrated human input, which are sparse yet accurate. And also, first topic is swarming, and how to develop the digital control to achieve uh, swarm autonomy. That actually I get to know that uh, from my PhD. And uh, under this, like uh, uh, the four main challenges in this area, we have developed uh, a bunch of nice results based on integration of control with data science, robotics, machine learning, and networks. So here is a uh, quick overview about that. Actually, only this part is kind of related to my PhD research, this algorithm. But after I joined Purdue, Purdue does provide me excellent platform to explore new topics and also collaborate with other uh, researchers. And so we have developed several other uh, directions, new directions. And uh, those have led to a bunch of uh, research publications, basically in top journals and uh, in control robotics and machine learning, and also several large projects I'm very lucky to, to, to have. And uh, education mentoring, you know, our research basically cannot, uh, 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 cannot be successful without a student. Currently, I have graduated two PhD students, one PhD already a faculty, and a postdoc also become a faculty. And, and of course, my group is very diverse and uh, international from all Kind of all the countries over the world. And uh, especially also, uh, also uh, recruit uh, female and URM students. And uh, as suggested by Ravine, I'd like to share my perspective about research and education. I would say my, uh, if, if there is any success on my research, I think my philosophy is focused on high quality research with impact. Uh, so in, students in my group, usually I will suggest them, you know, we would rather spend two or three years to figure out, formulate a, a fundamental problem, or original problem. You know, we could use three years to get a, a journal paper in top journals, rather than the fast conference publications. I feel sorry for my students, they don't have a lot of publications, but you know, all their research are, uh, I would say, have to be, have the quality there, especially on the original research part. And also exploration of new topics. And I said, usually, my, uh, of course, now I have a lot of funding. Uh, I could uh, explore more new topics. But at the beginning, when I didn't have funding, is uh, it's kind of 70% of, you know, for safety, I could uh, get uh, still be productive. But 30% and for the uh, new topic, that's mainly based on department TAs, actually. <laughs> and uh, also fundamental research. I kind of like, you know, no matter theoretical or experimental, to my opinion, it does not matter. I think focusing on the fundamental mechanism behind all these existing research, that's the part I have passion. And also collaborations. I like collaborations with uh, different expertise. 
and also uh, for mentoring, I would say, uh, even in my class, I always ask a student, you have to think deep, not just to be happy about, oh, I know this method, I know how to apply that. I always ask them, you know, why those smart people develop this method, this new method. You need to understand the fundamental mechanism. And if you want to you know, develop even experimental research, it's fine. But you still need to fund, uh, know the fundamental mechanism. And also, all students are different. It's really different. But they are all excellent learners. I, I really, I would say, uh, appreciate their efforts once we identify a problem of uh, impact and of their interest. And also, uh, the research in this area, I would say, uh, uh, in this autonomy, I cannot uh, uh, move forward. It will be difficult, difficult to move forward if we don't have collaborations. This is the area, autonomous and connected system is the area which really requires different expertises. So on the SAC month, initiating uh, this idea of forming this center for innovation control and uh, optimization. So we have, uh, initially we had 25 faculties, but now we have 64 from 11 departments. We have established a bunch of research themes and also we have the education goal. These are more like the highlights we have uh, uh, done for the center. It's basically the planning for, uh, for the frontier research, large scale funding, and also the with collaboration with the industry. And uh, also the uh, educational goals we have. We got several NE member support. So uh, my career goal is to advance control theories with optimization network learning to address fundamental challenges in the autonomous system and also to serve research education for university strategy initiative on the system. And uh, this is my page of SAC. I really have a lot of people to thank, uh, but Irvin told me that I only have 10 slides to present. <laughs> so I would, like, no, I would like to add another four or five. <laughs> I would like to add another maybe four slides to uh, SAC. You know, a lot of people, uh, maybe they even didn't realize that actually they have helped me a lot. Like a mom, I mentioned that he's uh, initiating the idea of forming a center for control. This is maybe one of the main things they have done uh, after joining Purdue, but it really means a lot to not just me, but also the control community and the Purdue. And uh, my mentors like Dan, and besides the research collaboration, Dan has ensured me, uh, more mentored me in, in many directions, like uh, getting fundings, uh, ensure, you know, especially bridge a lot of connections uh, between me and the funding agencies, and also teach me how to get uh, uh, funding. To be honest, I'm not a fan of writing proposals, kind of hate writing proposals, and uh, I enjoy much more in doing research than writing proposals. But we cannot get without funding. So, but with Dan, Dan Mordega mentored me to how to build reliable you know, funding resources, which actually saved me a lot of time in not writing proposals. I still, <laughs> I still get a lot of funding. And uh, this semester I have eight projects going on. But each, they just asked me to write a few pages and uh, more like, uh, to trust me and give me funding. And also, of course, Martin Cordes, my the other mentor. Also, we have a lot of uh, deep research discussions. But besides that, actually, Martin also, we had a lot of uh, interactions on how to success and the junior faculty, what to do. And uh, it's, uh, it's especially at the first few years when I was uh, in, under a lot of pressure um, because the uh, smooth uh, transition from a student to be a faculty. And also other, like uh, Arvind, I never thought a associate dean could be this uh, easy to be, up, uh, to be approachable. And I, sometimes I need some personal advice to email Arvind, and Arvind replied very quickly. And you know, the same as Mom, and also Wen too. But for Wen, you really don't email Wen Chen. You just knock his door, <laughs> and then, you know, this is my problem. But Wen usually stop working and then talk to me. And uh, of course, you know, all the other people, like uh, my department head, Bill, and Tom, and uh, in the morning, provide all the support to, the, to my career and also a special bill for the center operation. And actually, all the other colleagues, and uh, you know, George always enjoyed talking with George and a very inspiring talk, not just the research, and all the other, you know, how to or organizing activities and uh, things on ICON, and also my colleagues in control, like in SOC, Deng Feng, and, uh, and Art, Ryan, all this and also my advisor and my students. And thank you very much. This is all my presentation. Thank you. Sure.
There we go. So, so we have some time for questions and answers, and it looks like Marcia's putting the instructions up for the remote people. Shasha, when do you have to leave for class? I know this no, is a little I, different than... I, I, it, it's fine, 12. Class. At 12? Okay, so we do have time for some questions and yeah. answers. So does someone in the... Here we go. Uh, thank you, Joshua. I shared uh, the uh, great experience. And uh, yeah, so I have two questions. The first one is like, I saw so many, uh, you know, achievements in a such short time. How did you balance uh, or, uh, you know, mm, you know, balance your time for different activities, uh, research, uh, it, um, teaching, preparing class, and the mentoring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, the first question. And the second question is like, um, on your research, so uh, since you both work on the control theory side and the learning side, and you mentioned the uh, uh, like human role collaboration, uh, so traditionally maybe people think uh, theoretical based method is more appropriate for the uh, you know interaction with human for robots, but a learning based method maybe it's a kind of black box we do not know what's going on, maybe not good for the uh, you know uh, human robot interaction. Yeah, I want to hear your comments about that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first question, how to balance the time, actually, I even didn't thought about that when I was a junior faculty, because you don't have time to think about how to balance all this, <laughs> and, and also a lot of pressures. But I do have a device, more like, a, for me, I have a habit. Uh, the busier I am, usually I will spend more time in running, doing exercise, watching movies, things. It's really a good a method for me to release all the pressure and also fresh all the minds. I learned this from my PhD advisor, like uh, uh, Stephen Morris. So usually, I, when I have a research problem, I was too passionate about the research. I always knock his door, I said, oh, this is my result, that's my result. I said, oh, you know, you're already deep enough in the research. So I would suggest you taking a break, go to Acadia National Park. And let, you know, your, let your brain automatically working on the research problem. So the same for here. If you have under pressure, then I would say perhaps you need a tea walk, like me and Dan. <laughs> me and Dan don't. We always have a tea walk and uh, in the, uh, in West Lafayette. A second about research, human robot teaming. That's kind of accidentally I run into this area because when I first started to on the f fundamental research, I didn't do any human robot teaming. And I said, you know, I have additional resources from the department <laughs> when giving me the TAs. And okay, even without funding, let's do some fundamental research. That's inverse self known control. We have achieved more like a, uh, several journal papers on that. And then somehow we found, oh, if we look at the human motion at the op optimal control system, you actually all these methods could be applied for human motion uh, prediction. So it's, it's, it's somehow once I have achieved some nice result, um, the applications, but it's extra easy if you got the, the, uh, the theoretical part. And then start to get more fundings. So uh, I would say usually if you have 100 bucks uh, budget, then spend 70 maybe on the research with the guarantee, maybe 30 with exploration. That's very important to me, actually. So I would say, you know, really appreciate the additional resources provided by the department. Anybody else in the audience that has a question for Shashwai? I don't know if the chats have questions there or not. No, okay. So, um, so happy to be here, first of all. <laughs> um, as I know, and Martin knows, you recently uh, went back to your workaholic days and solved an important theoretical problem that um, you, were, you're, you and your former advisor were struggling with. So what have you learned about your ability to do that? And, and have you seen any evidence that you could help your own students now develop the skills to, and the patience to solve a hard theoretical problem? Yeah, sorry. thank you, thank you. So yeah, that's actually a story I shared with Dan and Martin about that. Uh, several weeks ago, my PhD advisor called me and email me a one page of note about the question, about a problem, about a very uh, hardcore control theory on consensus that actually he brought the consensus concept to the field. And uh, uh, I become immediately very interested in that. I just cannot sleep. So I just more and more <laughs> slept on the uh, problem. I emailed Dan and Martin and uh, I spent like this calculation papers, which I took from 
our department <laughs> to write to, to for doing the uh, the you know I like and uh, doing the, all the uh, derivation all these kind of things. Uh, at, it's all the week I more or like less slept uh, 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Sometimes email uh, back, and uh, that is more like um, I thought I already not that passionate about the hardcore control theory, but turns out not. Another problem is. Very interesting. I can see the possible fundamental impact. It just uh, become very excited about the problem. Although I have not uh, completely solved this problem, but actually uh, just partially solved them. More than I prove the result on, on the time the environment graph. And uh, of course, he is interested in more general result. But from this story, I'm more like a, regarding that question is that I found that first, not all students are interested in this kind of theoretical fundamental research. And uh, usually in my group, I let students decide and uh, you know what they want to do. And uh, for PhD, they need to be a little bit of deep in control theories. Uh, I think it's more like a kind of with our responsibility to teach students to appreciate actually the, the fundamental and the theoretical research result. I know flying a drone is much more exciting than writing equations. Me too, actually. And, uh, and, and at the beginning of my PhD study, I was, oh, why in consensus? Why the gossiping? It's just, you know, it's, uh, I want to do the formation control to, to, to develop the thermal control law for formation. But actually, more like, uh, but, you know, my advisor said, no, you have to focus on that. Otherwise, you cannot graduate. So it more like forced me to think deeper about all the research and also start to appreciate and Oh, of course, we always say, oh, everybody has a personal interest. But that kind of our own prejudgment about research. And, uh, but currently now, I think I'm OK to uh, all the research. Where to go experimental. Even in my class, I said, if, no, I don't limit you, you guys' course project. If you want to study COVID spreading, do it. You know, go to get some data and using the, 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 the tools we taught in class. Or you go to learn some new tools by yourself to model the COVID things. Uh, but I think, no, into the, uh, the theoretical research, kind of, uh, one the personal uh, interest. The other is uh, maybe I got trained in this way. <laughs> I realized that actually the whole I got trained, is the whole I do my, uh, uh, perform my faculty life, it kind of also what we can envision how we impact our students. So uh, when I trained my PhD student, uh, the first thing I told them, I said, uh, first, in our group, we don't care about a number of publications. Uh, you may publish the 1,000 paper, but if you don't prove you are independent, you have a strong independent research capability, you may not get a PhD. For a PhD, it really is a training for your research, and also you know, how did the research could potentially benefit the society. If without that kind of vision, without that kind of capability, I told them, you know, you don't tell me you published how many papers, just say I don't care about that. That's more like a, I kind of enforced the rule uh, in my group. Great, I think we're short on time. So let, let's all congratulate Shashway one you. more time. Thank Congratulations, Shashway. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. There was one comment from Dave Cavallari. He said, nice job. So just so that was the chat.